Number three then from the 2018 SQA Higher Maths Paper 2. A little three mark question here on determining whether or not this function, this cubic function, is increasing or decreasing when x is 2. So it's a straightforward little question. This is a bit of a gift of three marks because all that means is Whatever answer this function gives when x is 2, was the answer before it and after it on the way up or on the way down? Were they increasing or were the answers decreasing? Now you may well think, well, couldn't you just do that then? Couldn't you work out the answer at, let's put 2 here, and then work out the answers before and after? Well, in this case, the answer is probably yes, because you know that's a continuous function and if you knew where the stationary points were, because you don't want to encroach upon them, you could pick numbers before and after. To be as safe as possible, you want to get as close to 2 to avoid encroaching on any stationary points. So you could say, well, I could try 1.9 and 2.1 and see what happens. We'll do that. If you put in 2, the answer to the function is negative 12. If you put in 1.9, the answer is negative 12.441. And if you put in 2.1, the answer is negative 11.439. So looking at that, what happens is you pass through 2. That's becoming less negative, isn't it? It's increasing. So the answer would be is it's increasing. However, that's not an appropriate technique, really. It's actually quite lengthy, and it still doesn't guarantee, even though I've picked those numbers quite close to 2, that that's actually correct. Because you could have a really messy function with lots of terms. And there are maximums and minimums and all sorts of things going on round about here you're unaware of. But there's something that takes care of all of that. We'll just draw this picture here. A picture of this would be its graph. This is a standard cubic function. Wherever 2 is, say 2 was here for instance, instead of working out something before and after, because after all 2 might be down about here, and your choice of before and after could be these two which would give the wrong answer then, because now it's lower than the first point. The thing that takes care of that is the derivative, the rate of change. That would be the gradient of the graph, because that already has incorporated into it, making sure that the points on either side are as close as possible, are infinitesimally far apart, so there's no danger of anything happening between them. Well, that was quite a lot of talking just to say this then. So don't do that. There's no allowance for that in the marking scheme, just trying numbers before and after. No, you'll have to use the derivative. Now, if you're going to find the derivative, the rate of change of the answers, the best terminology is to use f dashed of x. You could use df by dx, but the handy thing about f dashed x is it's got a ready-made placeholder to put numbers into if you need to evaluate it. Apparently, they're also allowing you to use y, and then dy by dx... Normally that would have been penalised. I've seen that penalised in other Martin schemes. But the problem with that is if you want to evaluate it, you'd have to use that piece of notation, which would say, I'm going to evaluate this at x equals whatever, whereas that's ready made. So that's the best one. Right. So differentiate it. Multiply by the power. Take one off the power. Power's one there, if you like, so that just goes to a seven because a one drops to zero and x to the zero is one. But it's best just to remember that as if it's a linear term, then its derivative will just be the coefficient. Because you know that from a line. If you've got the line y equals 7x, its gradient is 7. And of course, a constant doesn't change. So there's no rate of change here, so that constant just disappears. And doing that gets a mark, because after all, this question has to be done with derivatives. You can't just work out answers. There are inherent dangers in doing that. So the next part would be, and this is where it's handy, so what happens when x is 2? We'll just put 2 into it. 3 times 2 squared minus 7. Now, strictly speaking, you're not really interested in the numerical part of the answer. You just want to know whether it's positive or whether it's negative. But it doesn't take much to work that out, because that comes to 5. And there's a mark for that. Last part, interpret the result. Well, f dashed of 2 is greater than 0. So they were on the way up. So that means the function is increasing at x equals 2. And that's really all there is to it. And it is so much faster just to differentiate it 
to get the answer than try and work out values, especially as this may disguise little complications that happen closer to the number two in other functions.